Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Realm Gaming, and like usual, bosses who have multiple fights in Super Mario Odyssey do not show multiple times on this list, as I'll only be ranking their hardest fight. Also, what game mode would y'all like to see next in the boss ranking series? Make sure to comment down below with the answer, and the game that is requested the most will most likely be covered next in this series. One more thing before I start this list. After I'm done ranking all the bosses in Super Mario Odyssey, I have a special section in this video where I'm going to be listing potential shows that I can upload to my channel alongside the boss ranking series. And when I'm done listing them, you as the viewer will have the chance to vote on which two shows out of the four you want to see the most, so that I know which type of content y'all want uploaded to this channel alongside the boss ranking series. If you want to skip to this section and vote now, the timestamp to jump ahead will be on screen or in the description down below. Anyways, with all that said, let's start this list. Spewer is definitely the one piece boss in Super Mario Odyssey and barely gets harder each time that you encounter him. When facing this boss in his third and hardest fight, he'll attack you by spewing poison, spewing poison, and spewing more poison. Yeah, that's pretty much all he does. Ain't digestion much? If you're fast enough though, you can land a hit on Spewer before he even has time to dish out his main attack. And then it's just a matter of waiting in the corner until you get the next chance to deal damage. So all in all, Spirit is a really, really easy boss, and there's really nothing else that needs to be said about him. Moving on. Next up on our list, we have Madame Brood, the ruler of the Rabbit Ridge. Although she's the overlord of the Brutal, she still ends up being the second easiest out of the five, due to her simplistic and repetitive moveset. Her only attack is to throw her pet Chain Chomp, which will then start chasing you in very predictable patterns. Granted, you do have to hit the Chain Chomp a total of 11 times before finally defeating this boss, but his charges are so easy to dodge that you shouldn't have trouble with Madame Brood in the slightest. Harry isn't much of a step up from the two pathetic bosses already mentioned. In her default phase, Harriet will throw bombs from her hair which you can knock back using your hat. If you miss these bombs, Harriet will eventually slam two more bombs into the ground, which you can hit back much more easily. How convenient. After you deal damage, Harriet will enter her defensive phase in which she will litter the ground with bombs in a specific pattern. During this time, however, you can easily transfer her back to her default phase by hitting one of the bombs as she is dropping it. These predictable and easily avoidable attacks are what make her one of the easiest bosses in this game. Silly rabbit, bombs are for kids! Did that joke make any sense? No it didn't, but who cares? Let's keep on moving. Rango, while still being an easy boss, presents more of a challenge than the other three brutals already listed. But let's be honest, that's not really saying much. He throws his spiked hats as his main attack, sometimes aimed directly at you and sometimes thrown with an arc to hit you from the side. To counter this attack, you can hit his caps with Cappy, which in turn will propel you upwards so that you can reach high enough to deal damage to this boss by stomping him on the head. After he takes a hit, Rango will pull down his spiked hat and full on try and ram you. Rango's speed wall in this phase is actually pretty surprising, so you definitely either want to be running away from him or hitting him back with your hat. I recommend the former, however, for one hat to run the wrong direction, and he'll immediately be stomping you into the ground. However, his default attack is so easy to counter that even with his defensive attack, Rango's fight still ends up being ridiculously simple and effortless. While the Rubber Brood definitely looks like a tough boss, it's actually really easy, like the others before it, but only if you know the correct techniques. During this boss fight, the Rubber Brood charges with a variety of attacks. It starts with shooting bombs and trying to crush you, morphing onto full and rushing at you and shooting out rotating discs onto the battlefield. The way that you're supposed to deal damage to this boss is to capture your hammer brother, throw enough hammers to break one of the Robo Brood's legs, and then climb up atop of the Robo Brood and ground pound on one of the four Brutals. After it takes damage, the Robo Brood roars, causing Mario to fly off of it and the fight repeats itself from there. However, by just mid-air jumping off a of Cappy multiple times, you can easily get back on top of the robot and continue dealing damage to this boss, skipping the parts of the boss fight that made it a challenge. For this reason, Robo Brood ends up being one of the easier bosses in this game. In this boss's rematch, Torque Drift is easy enough in his default phase, 
but during his defensive phase, he's actually pretty annoying. To damage this boss, you have to destroy the shield generator protected by the stone blocks, which will disable the force field around Torchrift, allowing you to damage him. After he takes a hit, Torchrift will send out shockwaves onto the battlefield, which will react with other shockwave generators to send out even more shockwaves, after which more shield generators will spawn, which you have to break, etc, etc. The reason Torchrift is so high on this list is because it's easy to overlook these additional shockwave generators on the sides of the arena, so more often than not, you'll just end up letting yourself getting hit by one. Just be aware that they exist, though, and you'll have no problems defeating this boss. Like, these bosses are really easy. Mollusk Glancer is unique because his first fight in the Seaside Kingdom is actually harder than his rematch. In his first battle, Mollusk Glancer will float around the water, shooting fire drills at you and whacking you with his tentacle. The difficulty comes from actually trying to land a hit on him, as he moves at a considerably high speed, and you constantly have to refill your water supply while fighting him. However, in the Mollusk Glancer's rematch, you have an infinite water supply while possessing the Gusher, making this boss fight significantly easier. Because of this, Mollusk Glancer's first fight definitely ends up being harder than his rematch, and ends up as one of the harder bosses on this list. Cocoteal is the only boss in Super Mario Odyssey in which you have to possess an enemy during the entire fight, and as a result of this, this fight ends up being somewhat more of a challenge. This boss flies around the arena and pukes out spiked fruit that litter it, and eventually vomits a stream of lava which you have to climb to smack it on the head. Man, these bosses really need to fix their digestive system. The main challenge comes from not running into the hazards lying in the soup, as well as climbing up the third vomit lava as it'll only come in spurts, requiring some near pixel perfect jumps. Sure, you can quickly finish this fight by hitting Cook to Steel to get it to spew lava immediately, but the boss is still difficult enough where you might die once or twice before you beat him. Or her. Do birds have genders in this game? Topper definitely has to be one of the hardest out of the four Brutals when you face him for the third time in Rabbit Ridge. His fighting tactic is to stack hats on his head which he'll use for Wrecking Bar when he breakdances on the floor. It sounds weird because it is. Even worse, these hats also act as a shield as you cannot damage Topper until you knock them all off. On top of this, every time you damage Topper, the number of hats on his head will increase once he switches back to his aggressive phase, starting with 3 hats, rising to 10, and eventually wearing 17 hats in his third phase. Yes, that is right. Over the course of this fight, you have to hit Topper 30 times with Cappy to ultimately defeat him. Granted, there is a small window when Topper breakdances where he can deal damage to Topper without hitting all of his hats off. However, this window is hard to reach, especially in the third phase, where you'll most likely just get hit by the hat stack if you try. All in all, this boss fight is surprisingly challenging for a Mario Odyssey boss, and you definitely don't want to let your guard down while fighting this crazy brutal. No matter which mainline Mario game you're playing, let's be real, the final Bowser fight always feels easier than it should be. This is definitely the case for the final fight with Bowser in Super Mario Odyssey which is the third time that you face him throughout this game. During this fight, when Bowser throws his hat, you have to hit it with your own hat and put his hat on your head. At this point, Bowser will start creating fire shockwaves by jumping around the stadium, and will then throw flaming shells at you, after which you can punch him and avoid his counter tail swipes to get in a singular hit. Granted, Bowser does block more often as the fight goes on, but his tail swipes are very predictable and easy to dodge. This Bowser is definitely one of the weaker final bosses in regards to difficulty in the Mario franchise. Alright, these next three bosses are actually pretty challenging, and even if you have a life heart active, they're still pretty tough to deal with. At number 3 on our ranking system, we have the rematch with the Lord of Lightning, a surprisingly realistic looking boss for a Mario game. Throughout each phase, the dragon will create electric razors that will charge up Mario, and after this, slam his head into the ground, causing an abundance of electric waves to radiate from the impact. However, after this, you have the chance to damage this boss. If you can climb on top of his head, pull the stake, and ground pound the revealed weak point all before he raises his head. This boss is the most difficult in the third phase as he'll send out these electric attacks more quickly and in greater number as well. Oh yeah, did I mention that the arena is made out of ice? 
because that's definitely something that's gonna make you slip up. Uh -huh. The Duo Mecha Wiggler, while not the hardest boss in this game, is definitely the most frustrating. Not only do you have to deal with all this boss's attacks, which range from charging at Mario to shooting fireballs out of its body segments, but you also have to overcome the tank's slow movement and clunky aim, as you can only damage this boss by shooting at its weak spots while possessing the tank. The number of targets that you have to hit to deal damage to this boss will constantly increase, along with the amount of fireballs that it fires, which are bloody difficult to dodge while inside of a tank. When fighting this boss, you definitely want to be under guard during the whole time, and even more so when you face the most difficult boss in this game. And finally, the hardest boss in Super Mario Odyssey, in my opinion, is the rematch with Knuckle Attack in the Mushroom Kingdom. It was kind of hard to decide what was the hardest boss in Super Mario Odyssey, because if I'm going to be completely straightforward with y'all, all of the bosses in this game aren't really that challenging and they're easily beatable within one or two tries. However, I do feel like the rematch with Knuckle Attack is more difficult than every other boss in this game. Not only are this boss's attacks more deadly and more numerous than the rest of the bosses on this list, but throughout this fight the most annoying enemies in the game, the Chincho, will spawn in great quantities and constantly swarm the player. These enemies are only so annoying because they're undefeatable when using Cappy, so more often than not, you'll just take damage from one when trying to avoid attacks from Knuckle Attack. It's these two factors hitting you at once that make this boss fight harder than the rest in the game. And there you have it guys, those were all the bosses in Super Mario Odyssey ranked from the easiest to the hardest.